Your very first vote as a new legislator will be for the Speaker of the House. Now that vote has consequences. Uh, legislators from our area at times have gone down and voted against the reigning Speaker and have suffered for it in committee assignments, uh, effectiveness, so forth. But they made they were uh, voting on principle. So out of out of curiosity, if Joe Strauss is once again nominated as speaker, will you support Joe Strauss for speaker of the Texas House? And I guess this time let's go the other way. Thank you. I've been asked this question before, and before I can even say what I would vote on, who's running against Joe Strauss? Is the only one running? Is the other person running worse? We all know that Joe Strauss has millions of dollars bankroll. He comes from a Democrat area. He works a lot with the Democrats. I think 51% of the bills passed last time were authored by Democrats. We have a problem right there that needs to be addressed. We have people at the top, like Joe Strauss, who've been there way too long, have way too much money, and they're not doing what the people of Texas are asking them to do. So how would I vote? I'd vote for what's right for Texas. You know, there's uh, 150 members in the Texas House. Right now, I think there's 52 Republicans, 90, uh, 52 Democrats, and 98 Republicans. That adds 150. Now. <laughs> so, but, uh, and, and what Randy said is correct. Last session, 51% of the bills passed were authored by Democrats. Uh, I keep seeing more and more uh, conservatives sent down to Austin. Um, you know, we've had different provisions on statewide ballots that uh, where the people are, are speaking loud and clear what they believe, and um, those things don't get done. So I believe that the, the leadership of the Texas House should look more like the people that we're sending down there. Well, first of all, I haven't met Joe Strauss and uh, not, never shaken hands with him, and I, so I don't know him. And I, uh, um, but I do know a little bit about his politics, and I do know uh, I do I do know several of the conservative Republicans in in this area that are already at, in the House, and um, they have respect for him. And I would have to it would. It would really have to, uh, my vote would be determined on the situation, who, who was running against him. And, uh, and like I say, I'm, uh, I've never met Joe Strauss, so I don't know the man uh, personally, but I'm looking forward to working with him. And I'd say, with, without there being, being a race, without even knowing who the candidates are, it, it, it wouldn't be prudent to just make a blanket statement about who you are and who you wouldn't vote for. I mean, I think I'd make the best speaker of the Texas House, but I'm probably going to be run. running, running for it this time. I, I tell you, what a lot of the frustration is, is that yes, conservative legislation does slow down and die, but that's not necessarily a leadership problem in the Texas House. Uh, it's a failure on the part of conservative legislators who are out of their depth. You have over 8,000 bills that get filed every session that your representative is responsible for understanding and voting on. And sometimes I would be up at the Capitol working as a policy advisor till midnight, one, two in the morning, trying to read these bills and get a grasp of them for the next day. And when you're the representative who has to go out and make a vote the next day, are you willing to put in the time? Do you have the, the ability to sit there and read those bills and understand them and understand what you're voting on? And not just understand them, but know how to push your legislation. East Texas is a rural area. These urban areas, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, they've got all the representation. They can set policy down in Austin however they want. If we want our East Texas values to have a voice, we want conservative principles to succeed, we have to overcome that deficit in numbers by quality of legislators, by skill in getting in there and knowing how to work and knowing what committee chairs to talk to and being able to answer their questions. These are highly educated people who are down there who have the ability to kill your legislation. And if you can't outthink them, if you can't outwork them, then your legislation is going to suffer and your district is going to suffer. Um, I'm not willing to let that happen to East Texas. This is where I grew up. I want to make sure we're getting our return on our infrastructure dollars to take care of our roads. I want to make sure that our water policy is taken care of, that we're compensated for our water, and that our needs are being met. 
And that can only happen for our rural areas if we've got a seat at the table, if we've got an effective legislator who knows how to get things done for his district, how to get things done for the conservative movement. I've got the experience to make that happen, uh, and I'm the right person to send down there to make sure that conservative principles and East Texas has a voice.